panel, welcome to the Marvel Next Big Thing panel. You all are amazing. That line was so long out here, and you all are just making my day. I was out late last night. I was out late the night before. But now you've woken me up, and I'm ready. Are you all ready to hear some announcements today? Are you all ready to meet some of the greatest creators in the world? Right. Well, you are in luck. We have some amazing creators who are with us today. We have some amazing announcements to make, things that no one in the world has seen before. And we've got a giveaway comic that's going to come around. Now, when the comic comes around, only one per person, OK? Uncle Ben is watching you from heaven, OK? He sees it. The, when the comics come around, you have great power. You have many comics. But with great power must also come all right, that's what I like to hear. That's what I like to hear. Okay, let's get this party started. My name is Nick Lowe. I'm the spider editor at Marvel, uh, and I got the greatest job in the world being Peter Parker's boss. I get to yell at him like J. Jonah Jameson, so I practice. Come on, Parker! All right, joining us today is the writer of the X-Men, Jerry Duggan. Also joining us today, one of the writers of Guardians of the Galaxy, Colin Kelly! <laughs> Colin! Welcome aboard. Thank you. His partner in crime, the other half of the Guardian sandwich, is Jackson Lanzig! <laughs> welcome, welcome. The Guardian Santa. Making his Marvel panel debut, we have the writer of the upcoming Ms. Marvel, the new mutant, Saber Prezada. Saber! Let's make him feel at home here, okay, ladies and gentlemen? Let's make him feel at home. Woo! Saber! Ah. Uh. One of my dear friends and, the, and one of the best writers in the business as well, the writer of Amazing Spider-Man, Zeb Wells! Yes. We have uh, one of the preeminent editors in this business. She edits the Voices Project. She edits a bunch of awesome X-Men books. Sarah Brunstead. Next, we have the man with the ukulele who doesn't have it with him today. We have the man with the greatest mustache in comics. Ex-editor Jordan D. White! And you know him, you love him, the editor-in-chief of Marvel Comics, the man to talk to if you go anywhere in the world and you need a good place to get, a, to get a, 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 an amazing meal, Mr. C.B. Sabolsky! <laughs> Excellent. This is your panel. Now, like I said, we will be giving away this special limited variant edition to Amazing Spider-Man number 29 that Laniel Francis Yu and Sonny Go did. It's going to come towards the end of the panel, so stick around. I mean, who am I kidding? No one's going to want to leave with the amount of stuff that we've got to talk to you about and when we get to Q&A period, right? All right. So let's... I'm still all fired up. Jerry, I hope you're ready. Jerry, I hope you're ready. I'm here. I'm ready. Okay. Three coffees in. The fall of X is here. Here we go. Jerry. Whole fire gala. What on earth is the fall of X? It is, uh, well, it, autumn is coming, uh, and we are, uh, without spoiling too much, uh, we, the mutants on Krakoa, have enjoyed uh, a really long winning streak, and uh, I think it's safe to say some of the winning is over. Yes. So this is the cover to the Hellfire. Phil comic. Noto. Let's, yep. Phil yeah. Noto. What a wizard. Yeah. An art wizard. And this is amazing. The, Jerry is joined by a murderer's row <laughs> of artists. Adam Kubert, Luciano Vecchio, Matteo Loli, Russell Dodderman doing... I mean, Russell Dodderman, ladies and gentlemen. He's yeah, incredible. the Russell pages are incredible. Javier I mean, they're Pena, all incredible. R.B. Silva, Josh Kassar, Chris Anka, Pepe Larraz, and this amazing Phil Noto cover. And it all... It, you are not ready for it. I'm going to tell you right now. You are not ready it's for the Hellfire Gala. Less than a week away. Less than a week away. Till Less. Till this punches everybody here in the gut. Oh. 
<laughs> Gird your loins, Be they say. <laughs> between, between that Hellfire Gala issue and Iron Man 8, the same week, uh, it's 92 pages. It's basically an event in a can. I think it was one of the most complicated undertaking uh, undertakings we had, right? To that, that any human oh, yeah. has undertaken. <laughs> yes, that any... Like, the, the, the you think the moon landing was complicated. Yeah. <laughs> you, no. The Great Wall of China is no. awesome. However, the Hellfire Gala, you know, I just got to say. <laughs> no, but, but it's, it's an awesome issue. It is so intense and so awesome and so beautiful, and, and I love it. And it sets up the fall of X. This oh, August. Here we go. And it, it, is, it spans the X-Men books, right, Jerry? Spans the X-Men books, involves Iron Man, uh, who, as you know, uh, will not enjoy watching his technology be co-opted for uh, nefarious reasons. And the whole line is affected. Um, the events of the Hellfire Gala will reverberate through the entire universe and uh, create a uh, the reason to for Steve Rogers to reform the Unity Squad. Yeah. So we have Avengers and X Men together uh, fighting uh, forces of evil, and not all of the f the full cast is not revealed on that Ooh. Uncanny Avengers cover. So oh, and in the middle there from Kale, uh, that's the Mark Nill stealth suit. Uh, I I miss the old days of a of a briefcase armor. So uh, Tony <laughs> Tony is hiding the fact that he is Iron Man in Fall of X, and uh, that is uh, the new stealth suit with some new capabilities and a new costume for Kate Pride, aka Shadowcat. There she is. Any Kitty Pride fans out there? <laughs> You're in good company. There's some big Kate Pride stuff, and we, but that's not all, the only big stuff we've got coming, Jerry. I, oh yeah! I, you know, I think we need a little mood music. What did you guys like? A little little mood mood music? <laughs> oh, a little loud. Perfect. Oh, there we go. Ah, oh, with the wedding, you need wedding music, right? So, so Gary, who's getting married here? It's the wedding of two people that can't stand each other. <laughs> We've all been there, hopefully in the audience and not up at the altar. Uh, look, this is a real thing that we're doing. Uh, it will make perfect sense when you get there. And not only, if, if you are repulsed by this, I can promise you, you will only want more. Uh, come August, September, and October. Uh, so uh, Fall of X kicks off in July. They are getting married. It will make perfect sense, I promise. Oh. And uh, we have a, a, a wedding and a honeymoon to look forward to. Woo. Honeymoon issue is in the can, as they say. Well, I mean, like, the, you know, they always say before you can love someone else, you have to love yourself. And I would say those two are the people in, in the Marvel Universe who love themselves the most, I think, right? Yes. So they're ready to love each other. Of course. Look at them. Look, they can't take their eyes off each other, and all their former lovers are there to wish them well <laughs> as they descend into the new hell of marriage. I mean... <laughs> they just invited them all out of spite. Yes, yes. <laughs> and this cover by Lucas Warneck is just so glorious. Lucas is. Lucas just... has been a star for us uh, for for years now since he stepped in uh, on Marauders, and it's been a thrill to watch him go off to uh, Immortal and uh, all the wonderful things that he's done. What a talent! Uh, a murderer's row of talent. Uh, we would not be able to do any of these stories without them, so but a great. true joy to see this stuff. So it unfolds over X Men twenty six and Invincible Iron Man number ten. And it is just incredible. And then I, I'm going to segue out of this into something w even more intense. I love this cover. X-Men 29. <laughs> wow. Jerry and Josh are back with Doom's X-Men. What do you mean Doom's X-Men? Doom doesn't have X-Men, Jerry. Well, it turns out he does. What? He was keeping it on the down low. Um, so, Gosh. yeah, we have um, not peeked into Latveria for a while. Um, I don't want to give away too much, but I will say the X-Men discover that there are mutants in Latveria, and when they go there, they seem not ideologically uh, aligned with the X-Men. Oh uh, a lot of fun, a lot of new characters, uh, a lot of new mutants, and of course, we have Victor there, um, who has his own agenda. And uh, Josh obviously put so much love into these pages. We really can't wait for you to meet uh, these characters. I hope in the credits you all take the Vaughn, like Jerry Von Duggan, <laughs> Josh That's Von Kassara. That is perfect. Good idea. I'm stealing that. Uh, Jordan, go ahead. Uh, I was just wanted to point out a couple other fun things about this that you might not notice at first because of these cool new characters. You've got, obviously you have 
uh, Kate in her Shadowcat costume. You got Ms. Marvel there in her new costume, which is fun to to see on on. I, I think she's dead though. Uh, well, we'll have to we'll have to read the the Hellfire okay. Gala next week and see what she's supposed to. Yeah, be. Jordan, I'm, are you do you read Amazing Spider-Man? Uh, I've heard of it. I, I, okay. <laughs> um, well, we'll get to that later. We'll get to that <laughs> and then I also do want to point out that Wolverine the, in his uh, in his yellow and blue costume, which we haven't worn in a while. Ah. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, that is. Uh, it's interesting. I uh, Logan has been very busy in uh, in the last few years, so I haven't had much of a chance to uh, write Logan. So true, true joy to bring you X Men Twenty Nine. That's in December. That's so awesome. And and like you said, the Unity Squad is getting back together. We have Uncanny Avengers. Any Uncanny uh, Avengers fans out there? I didn't know we were showing yes. these. Yep. How so, about so, that? So we've seen the the number two and number three before, but Uncanny Avengers number four cover. This is a debut. No one in the outside world has seen this cover before God, on sale beautiful. this November. But I love these covers, especially that number number two, three cover in the middle with the hole through Deadpool and the Fenris twins. Yeah. Their hands for it. So oh good. man, the Fenris twins are so so awful, and they are so <laughs> great to write. They are so much fun to write. Um, hey, this book is really important. It's. Um, it, uh, I, it's hard to talk about this book, although this book shows you a lot. Um, you know, it almost looks like days of uh, future now. Um, they're in a lot of trouble after uh, the events of the Hellfire Gala, and um, we're going to give you whiplash. Uh, so a lot of your favorites are going to show up here, and we have some really crazy uh, reveals to come uh, before December. And these covers, of course, are by Javier Garon. We have an ongoing competition in the comics industry for nicest person in comics, and Javier Garon is almost always in like one, two, or three. It's just one of the nicest people in comics. Jerry's like number 45. <laughs> um, like, Wow. Sorry, guys. Sorry, yeah. guys. Maybe next not, year. Wow. Not this Maybe sick. next year. Saber's like number four. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that tracks. I'll take it. That tracks. <laughs> well, All I, right. I also did want to mention, it, 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 uh, there was a great teaser for what happens at the gala and sets up Uncanny Avengers. If you read uh, the Free Comic Book Day issue, the X-Men and Avengers Comic Book Day uh, issue this year, um, and if, if not, I, I, we're, it's coming out again. I forget. Marvel Zero. Mar yeah, Marvel yeah. number zero. Uh, we'll re reprint it uh, for everybody if you ha didn't get a chance to check that out. And... And I think it is on Marvel Unlimited for free. There you go. I there believe. You go. So if you haven't checked it out, uh, it's uh, a really, really fun issue that has uh, eight pages of X-Men, eight pages of Uncanny Avengers, and the beginning of a long emergency. Awesome. All right. Jerry, wonderful job. You may rest. I'm a wrap. <laughs> See ya. No. Jerry, you have to stay around. Okay. Up next... Uh, any fans of a certain uh, spacefaring team called the Guardians of the Galaxy? Well, you are in luck because Colin and Jackson here, along with Kev Walker, have kicked off such an incredible run of Guardians. This, these are the covers of four and five. These are completely insane. That is an enormous Groot holding the Earth like a marble. Yeah, that that's a real big Groot. What is happening, guys? What have you done? You will discover soon. Uh, starting in Guardians number one, we introduced the idea of Groot Fall, uh, that being a mysterious and largely evil-seeming uh, Groot that seems to be landing on planets, terraforming them into Groots, and seemingly killing everything on those planets. Uh, the Guardians are down to a, like, thin squad. What is left of the Guardians after... Uh, uh, this Groot Fall has, has obliterated most of what they had built um, in the previous incredible run by Al Ewing. And so we are now looking at the Guardians in their most desperate time, right? They are effectively lone cowboys on this you know, endless frontier, just trying to stay one step ahead of Groot Fall and save the people they can save. But what is Groot Fall? How did it come about? what tore these Guardians apart and what is going to bring them back together. That is all going to come together in Guardians of the Galaxy 6, easily the most important and sort of like seminal issue of this run. Alex where Lins doing amazing work. Wait oh, until you so see good. what Alex Lins is doing on this book. It's insane. Uh, and out of that sort of pivot point, the second half of our run is going to sort of blow open and it's going to be a very different book after issue 6. Um, so as you can see... As our uh, two of our very, very favorite characters, Wiccan and Hulkling, Woo! join Wiccan this Wiccan and Hulkling book. fans out there? Yes. It's actually, 
It's huge for us. We met reading uh, Young Avengers. That was the thing that really bonded us as fans. We literally met in college and like used to drive to the comics. As right best now. friends. So yeah. getting to bring Wiccan and Hulkling into this book uh, is a kind of great full circle moment for us. It was very exciting. That's awesome. And these covers, of course, by the incredible Marco Cacchetto. What a genius. He just is finishing up his Daredevil run now. He's he's here at San Diego. You might see him walking. Mm. Huge Italian man. He is like... <laughs> he is like a, um, an Adonis. It's amazing. So if you see a big guy, just walk up and speak Italian to him. And if he answers Marco. back, it's probably it's Marco. It's definitely Marco. Right. Uh, and, and we have a debut here to make as well. We have a cover by Emilio Lazio to Guardians number eight. Oh. Check it out. Oh. I haven't they, seen that. That's dope. Though they all look wooden. They all look very wooden. They, all they do, do look really wooden. They do all look really wooden. That's, That's weird. That's really weird. I wonder why. Oh. That's bizarre. But read the book. What a we strange choice. I think oh. we gotta move on. Oh. It's too scary. It's too scary. Now that's not the only book you guys are writing for us. We just announced, I believe this past week, The Thunderbolts. Thunderbolts. Oh yeah, baby. Thunderbolts. Justice. Yep. Like lightning. lightning. And this is the debut of the Terry Dodson main cover that you see there on the left. Uh, it is you two and Geraldo Borges with this cover by Terry Dodson and this variant cover by Mahmoud Azrar. One of the cool things, you know, some of us, uh, hopefully a lot of you have been reading a run on Captain America and uh, enjoying it, I'd like to think. So good. Yeah. Thank you very much, Nick. Um, but what we really wanted to do is kind of continue some of those threads. So obviously you guys know that we've been dancing with Bucky for quite a while now. Uh, <laughs> we love our Bucky Barnes. He's right? just been through his, like, villain era. He's been through his villain era, which is leaving him really on the kind of forward foot in terms of momentum. So what we want to do with this book is we're taking a lot of that kind of energy that he's had, right? He's going to be building off of everything he's gone through and realizing that there are some things that you just cannot let stand, right? If you are going to step out there and you are going to be the hero that you know you can do, sometimes that means taking out evil before it gets started. And so what we're looking at is a Bucky who's got a modus operandi a little bit closer to the Punisher, but with the... Um large scale abilities and enabling capacities of things like S.H.I.E.L.D. and Nick Fury and, you know, every great espionage character in the Marvel Universe at his beck and call. So alongside a new uh, sort of retake on uh, the Contessa Valentina de Allegra de Fontaine, there's no, there was too many Ds, that's Contessa Valentina Allegra de Fontaine, apologies, Val. Uh, he's gonna be effectively in each issue calling at least two of the people people that you see in this image. This book is not a book where all of these characters are gonna show up every uh, time and like be in a clubhouse and high five each other. These are not the Avengers. These are loners and strangers and shadow characters who are stepping into the shadows one by one and um, taking out evil permanently. So uh, I don't know if you can catch how extremely dead the Red Skull looks on the cover of issue number one. But that's the issue of, num that's issue number one. <laughs> So, so where do we go next? Check that out. <laughs> <laughs> and, and thank you guys so much. There's one more thing I need you to talk about. A brand new announcement for this panel. You are also writing this year's installment of Timeless. It's the U2 yeah. along with Juan Cabal with this amazing cover by Kale New. Last year's Timeless introduced stuff that's going on in the Avengers. The previous year set up Axe Judgment Day. So you know big stuff is coming in Timeless. Talk to us about who these people are we see on the cover. Welcome to the dark future of the Marvel Universe. At the end of time, one hero remains. He wields the powers of Iron Man, the will of Khonshu, and the very machine of the eternal Earth. He is the immortal Iron Man. I'm sorry, no, <laughs> he is the immortal Moon Knight. <laughs> We're so excited. Sorry, Jackson. The immortal Moon Knight who sits at the end of all of this, holding it on with Khonshu's will. And there is only one person who can stand against him at this end of time. And that is a person that we all know and love. Luke Cage. The master of the immortal weapons. Ooh. The wielder of the uh, powers of the century. Now discipline, using his discipline to hold both in uh, perfect synchronicity. The blood of the Hulk courses through his veins, and in his fist is the last remaining vestiges of his friend Danny Rand, the Iron Fist. Woo. Power Man versus the Immortal Moon Knight. 
Timeless number one coming later this year. So cool. These, these designs by Juan Cabal are so cool. How cool are they, my guy? They're awesome. I can't wait for this book. Thank you all so much for talking about it. Now, many in this room, you probably know that in Amazing Spider-Man number 26, the heart of the Marvel Universe died. Kamala Khan, Ms. Marvel, died saving the world. Uh, and just two weeks ago, we released Fallen Friend, The Death of Ms. Marvel, uh, along with many of the creators that, that made Kamala who she is. Uh, you may not have heard, you probably heard then our next big news that just dropped recently as well, that she's coming back. <laughs> she's coming back in Ms. Marvel, The New Mutant. And we are so lucky to be joined here by one of the co-writers of that, Saber Prasada, and he is being joined by Ms. Marvel herself, Iman Vellani, is coming to write Ms. Marvel. Really cool. Unbelievable. So, so Saber, now you y'all might not know this, Saber was on in the writers' room and one of the writers of the Ms. Marvel series on Disney Plus, and so right, so good. Right? Woo! And uh, and so when Iman uh, wanted to come in and join us. Uh, they, they, Iman and Saber already knew each other, so they came together to co-write this. Uh, Saber, can you tell us a little bit about what it's like, how, what the differences between working on the show and working on the comics is? Yeah, I mean, we, we all came into the show as big fans of the comics, so that was always our, our North Star when we were figuring out what the story was going to be. Um, but we did know that it had to fit within the greater MCU continuity, and that was a really fun challenge to, to figure out how that was going to work. And then the moment Iman joined, all of a sudden, everything took on a whole new life and a whole new collaboration now that we had the right person who just embodies Kamala inside and out. Um, and I've had the fortune of working with a lot of really talented actors and performers. It's very easy for me to separate out the performer from the character, except for Iman. <laughs> Every time you know, I'm talking to her, I have to catch myself and so that I don't accidentally call her Kamala because she just <laughs> is Kamala. So awesome. And so we, we've seen that image in the previous slide, but these are, are we're debuting these covers by Sarah Pichelli. Here's the cover to number one. She's at Empire State University. What? What's Is happening, Sarah? going to college? Kind of. Uh, she'll be there for the <laughs> summer, um, uh, undercover on a mission for the X-Men. And here are the covers to number two and three. They were classified for months as we were building up to these announcements. But we're so pumped. These, she in the danger room on that second one? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. So cool. She got danger roomed, Jordan. <laughs> she got danger roomed. Uh, and so cool. And then with, with uh, what, how, what's going on with Jubilee, Gambit, and, and Rogue there, Saber? Uh, I don't know. You may have to ask Jerry. I basically run everything by him first. <laughs> you know what? This is one of the, uh, the jewels of Fall of X. It's a great comic, um, and you guys hit the ground running uh, it, in, a, in a, frankly, a storm of do, characters with their different orbits, and uh, it's been a joy to watch you guys crush it. And so Im Iman and Saber are joined by Carlos Gomez and Adam Gorham on art. And these are the covers. And to give you a little bit more of a taste, we are debuting a trailer for Ms. Marvel, The New Mute. <laughs> Woo! So cool. So much fun. On sale this August. Ah, oh, thank, thank you so much, Saber, for talking with us about that. Okay. Uh, anybody reading Spider-Man comics? I learned about this new Spider-Boy. 
So in case you didn't know, in Spider-Man number seven, at the, at the climax and the culmination of the end of the Spider-Verse, a new character came out. But is he new to the Marvel Universe? There's all kinds of mysteries behind Bailey Briggs, and those mysteries will begin to be solved with Spider-Boy number one by Dan Slott, Paco Medina, with this incredible cover by Umberto Ramos and this awesome variant cover by Chris Campagna. November 2023. Now this character, I, I, I've been in comics for 21 years, okay? I've been at Marvel for 21 years, and I've never seen anything like the fever behind this Spider-Boy character when he debuted. Uh, thank you all for embracing Bailey and Spider-Boy. Uh, we have such huge plans for him. Uh, Dan Slott is, I've, I've almost never seen him this energized about this character, and we've got all kinds of incredible plans coming up for Bailey and Spider-Boy. Uh, and we can't wait to share that all with you in, in November. So please join us there. Okay, okay. Giving you time to warm up, Zeb. Hope you're ready for the hot seat. I'm ready. You ready? I'm ready. Ooh, coming up in just a couple weeks, we have amazing Spider-Man number 31. Why is Tombstone uh, wearing a, a tuxedo, buddy? Because his daughter's getting married. Oh, wedding bells. To Peter Parker's best friend. Yeah, Randy Robertson, anybody? Randy Robertson, maybe you've heard of him. And um, yeah, things don't go exactly as planned. And they go so bad that uh, the repercussions will lead into our big crossover later in the year. We can't talk about that yet, Zach. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We can't talk about that yet, man. Yeah, but, you know, people, people have been asking for so long, like, you know, why do you hate love? Why do you hate romance? Why does the Marvel Spider-Man office hate weddings? And we're giving them a wedding, the yeah. wedding that they want. <laughs> yeah. It's true. But this issue is huge. It is, the, the main story is huge. And then we have all kinds of teases in it as well. Some stories that we're teasing for Amazing Spider-Man, some that we're teasing in other spider books. There's a, a kind of a, we'll be talking about something else, a different part of it that you get your first taste of in ASM 31. And the last few pages, uh, are going to tease something that, that I, we're not even going to talk about here. You're going to have to pick up the book to get it. And it's how many the, pages is it, Nick? It's 80 pages total. 80 pages. It's a beast of a book. Because it's Legacy 925, correct? Yep, yep. Legacy number 925. We, we celebrated with 925 issues ago, and, and we're blowing this one up for the wedding and for all these huge stories that are coming up in the Spider Office this, for the next 12 months and more. Uh, and that leads into one of my favorite arcs we've done yet. With, these are great covers by John Romita Jr. The interiors are all by Patrick Gleason, number 32, 33, and 34. What is happening here, Zeb? Well, I said when I started this that I, I, I would not do my version of Craven's Last Hunt. But as you've learned, Nick, I don't have any integrity. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we came up with an idea that we thought was just too fun to, to leave on the table. So. I can't say why this happens, but Peter Parker gets into a very bad mood. And so when Craven starts sniffing around again, he's not in a mood this time. So it's kind of a reversal of Craven's last hunt. Yep. And we Spider have Spider-Man going after Craven in a very brutal way. And then the culmination of the story really deals with a lot of the threads that have been going on in the entire run and yep. spin us off in a, in a new direction. So it's an exciting arc. Pat Gleason is doing the art, and he is nailing it. It's oh my incredible. God. And uh, we can't even show any of it because there's too many spoilers. For and we are going to get Spider-Man back in that black costume for a little bit. Yep, yep. And, yep. Uh, and there's some more scariness here. Like, I don't know what is happening on that image on the left. And I don't even think we could talk about it, Zeb. <laughs> I don't even think we could talk about it. But on the right, that's Ed McGinnis art right there. Because Ed McGinnis is returning to Amazing Spider-Man as well. Uh, he is the, the yin to John Romita Jr.'s yang. They are our, our home art teams uh, in Amazing Spider-Man. And uh, did anyone read the, the dark web arc of Amazing Spider-Man? Yeah. Right? We debuted a new character in there who's coming back, y'all. You ready for him? Our boy Rec Rap. Yes. Anyone out Look there know Rec Rap? God. He's so happy. <laughs> so happy. If you Rec Rap is Parker backwards, because he's a, he's a demon from Limbo who's obsessed with Spider-Man and Peter Parker, and he is back. And uh, on that cover number 38 is a terrifying new creation of Zeb and Ed McGinnis that is one of the scariest new villains you will ever meet. Yes, Rec Rap makes Ed so happy. 
So <laughs> yeah. please buy it so that Ed can keep drawing Rick Rap because I don't know what he'd do without him. <laughs> <laughs> but we got so many surprises coming up in this book, and it is all leading bit by bit by bit to our spider event of the year that kicks off uh, in November and December. It is called Woo! War. Knows. We have, there's a gang war brewing ever since number one. Zeb, can you t give us a little tease for it? Yeah, so uh, Tombstone was in the first arc of Amazing Spider-Man. Love that character, Johnny loves drawing him. And there's also, you know, Johnny has been done a lot of Spider-Man and he did a lot of, of the gang war stuff in the 80s. And so we wanted to go back there and do a ground level Spider-Man story where Spider-Man has to get his hands dirty, New York goes crazy, it's on fire, and he has to protect the entire city. Yeah. Put together a team. It's true. Well, and it all kicks off in November. There's a prelude issue of sorts called Amazing Spider-Man Gang War First Strike that Zeb has written. We have Joey Vasquez, who did some, some spider issues for me a few years ago and then went off to Marvel Studios for a couple years to work on, on some projects there. And we drew him back. This is an amazing cover by John Romita Jr. there. And Joey's doing incredible art on the interiors. And you'll see some of our crime lords and ladies at the bottom there. Some we, you, you, you don't have even met yet, but the city gets set on fire. The city goes to H-E double hockey sticks, as they say. The, the world needs more crime ladies, too. Yeah, like crime ladies, Why a not? lot of crime ladies. I love it. Are in there. So this, also in November, like the scope of it, you'll begin to see the scope of what this gang war is as we also launch some series that are gonna tie into it, starting with Luke Cage Gang War. Any Luke Cage fans out there? Yes, yes. Bringing this issue, we are so glad to have Rodney Barnes back writing for Marvel. He writes this incredible book, Philadelphia, which if you haven't read is, is incredible. He's being joined by Ramon Box with this amazing cover by Kanan White. It launches this November. The first issue sets the, sets the, uh, the tone for the series, sets, reminds you what Luke Cage is, the mayor of New York City, if you didn't know. Luke Cage is the mayor. He's been since the end of Devil's Reign. And we are so excited to be launching this new Luke Cage book. But that is not the only thing we're launching in this November. Are there any fans of uh, a character named Jessica Drew out there? Woo! Ah, excellent. I've come to the right place then, because we are launching a new Spider-Woman series just in time for Gang War. It's being written by Steve Fox, who's been doing some great work in the X office, awesome writer, drawn by Carola Borelli, with, this, with incredible covers by Laniel Francis Yu, and it kicks off in November. You get your first taste of it. This is what I was referring to with Amazing Spider-Man 31. Kind of a prelude to this series happens there. Steve Fox wrote an incredible short story that is in Amazing Spider-Man 31, and it sets up this series. It is a kind of back-to-basics Spider-Woman series. It is action-packed. It is dramatic. It puts Jess in a crazy, tight spot that only Jessica Drew could possibly get out of. Wow. It's such an incredible... That looks great. Oh, it's, it's, hey, it... hey, Jordan, when is uh, uh, Dark X-Men? Uh, yeah, Dark X-Men. Uh, is that X -Men November? That reading, uh, starts in uh, August as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, Steve Fox, that, that book's incredible too. So Absolutely. He's going to be the mayor of the fall of yep. X. So cool. Uh, and it's not just Amazing Spider-Man that's tying in, as you're seeing from the cover that's in your hands. The other, one of the other main characters of Gang War is Miles Morales. Any Miles Morales fans out there? Yeah. We have, the, the, I'm so proud of the book that we have in our current Miles Morales Spider-Man. Cody Ziegler is our writer and doing incredible work. He's usually joined by Federico Vincentini. Uh, and, and, and Federico's coming right back. We'll, we'll be talking about him a little bit later too. We have Partha Pratim stepping in for art on issue 12 that's setting up gang war in Miles as well. But it all leads to December when, when gang war truly begins in Amazing Spider-Man number 39. John Romita Jr. is back. He is drawing all of the gang war issues of Amazing Spider-Man. And Zeb, you were talking about a team coming together? Yep, check them out. We've got Spider-Woman, Elektra, Miles, She-Hulk. That's rad. And, 
And keep in mind, I write all of these myself, okay? I'm not like Sabir. I don't have Tom Holland on my shoulder, <laughs> like pitching me ideas and Tobey Maguire proofreading for me, okay? I gotta do this stuff myself, okay? And, and I want credit for that. She have a uh, barbed wire wrapped around her knuckles? That's right. That's, that's right. the coolest She-Hulk She's ready to go. Ever. She's everybody, ready else, to go. everybody else is like, I had to buy a weapon, and She-Hulk's like, I didn't. I yeah. love this. <laughs> and uh, it's so good that Johnny is already complaining about how many characters he has to draw. Yes. So, like, he's already, we are punishing this man. So uh, there's a lot of cool, cool action. Um, Johnny keeps calling me like, you gotta promise me a snowstorm next time. Yeah. They're in a tundra. Uh, no backgrounds. Ke Kev did that to us. He was like, we got three issues into Guardians, and we were like, Kev, there's gonna be a huge space battle in issue five. And he said, then there can be nothing in issue four. <laughs> and so we wrote issue four of Guardians. It came out a couple days ago, which is just Rocket Raccoon being sad alone on a desert planet for 20 <laughs> pages. And it worked out great. If you don't hey. like it, blame Kev. <laughs> hey, hey, Zeb, uh, what does She-Hulk say when she punches you with the barbed wire? I don't know. Do you have a pitch? I don't know. Maybe, maybe you do need Tom Holland. Uh, uh, no, I, <laughs> no how I, about, how I about, didn't know I'd be improv up how, here. How about, how, about, how about the defense rests? Hey. <laughs> Forever. <laughs> no, you, <laughs> I'll take it. The defense? Yes. Because <laughs> you put barbed wire on a fence, you see. All right, <laughs> I'll sit down now. Now you might recognize this cover. This cover might look a little similar. We couldn't help ourselves. Uh, there's a John Romita Jr. cover. I'm gonna quiz you on it later. So think about it. Come up with your guesses later. I might let somebody uh, who thinks they know it call it out later, okay? But not yet. Not yet. Because we're not done with announcements yet. We're not even done with gang war announcements. Because we are also launching a mini series of oh, the hell. Deadly Hands right. of Kung Fu Gang War. We're so excited. Greg Pak is coming back to write. This is an incredible foil variant cover by Benjamin Sue that is coming out. The, the covers are by David Aha, and it, it launches in December just in time for Gang War. Shang-Chi fans out there? Yes. Make sure you talk to your local comic book shop. If you, if you don't know where yours is, comicbookshoplocator.com. You just go get there. And I mean, we love our comic book stores. They are the salt of the earth. Uh, and so we are so glad to have them. So find, make sure you add this to your pull list. And we're, 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 we still have some stuff to talk about here because we are also launching uh, a Daredevil Gang War miniseries because there's two Daredevils in the Marvel Universe right now. Who can tell me who this one is? Yes. Any, big fa any fans of the Chip Zdarsky, Marco Coquetto run out there? Yes. Woo! They're going to finish strong. And Elektra is not going anywhere. Elektra as Daredevil. Erica Schultz is writing. Sergio Davila is drawing. That launches with Gang War this December, as there is a job that only Elektra can do as part of their a part of their strategy to just stop this gang war and make New York City safe once again. I was talking before about Miles Morales, Spider-Man. Here are uh, the, the covers by Federico Vigentini, who is returning for the Gang War issues here. Uh, anyone see who the villain might be at the bottom of that cover to number 13? Yes, Roderick Kingsley. We, te we used him in Amazing Spider-Man recently, but that was just the beginning. That was just the beginning. He is coming for Brooklyn. He is making his big play. Any Hobgoblin fans out there? Absolutely. Hobgoblin is a huge, as he was a big part of the, of the original gang war, he is a huge part of this story here. And it looks like uh, things might not be all hunky-dory for Miles and his uncle over there either, huh? Aaron the Prowler returns. Well, here's the scope of Gang War. Like I said, November stuff is kind of like a prelude, and it sets it up for December, January, and February. It is huge in scope. It is, you know, if, if Dark Web was our big mystical limbo insanity, this one brings it all down to earth. Very street level. Any, anything I'm missing, Zeb? What, anything else you want to talk about, Gang War? No, I think you. I think you got it. We're very excited about it. We're throwing everything at this story, and uh, by the end of it, we will we will be in a completely different place than we started it. For sure. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. All right, now I'm going to put the quiz up. I'm going to put the quiz up. Hey, everyone, remember we talked about this cover. Do we have any guesses for? Yes, you right there. Well, you got it! Uncanny X-Men 210! Whoa! Whoosh. No prize for you. 
Well, she gets more than a no prize. She gets a yes prize. I was going to say, that's a yes prize, right? Yeah. Yeah. We have a special variant, super rare variant cover. Only about 25 of these were printed. I'm going to bring it down to you. Wow. Boy, that added, like, uh, a few more questions, uh, I figure. That shaved yeah. a lot of time <laughs> off. I wouldn't have gotten 210. I knew it was yep. that cover, but... Is it, so it's one of my favorite covers I of all time. It. I love that cover so much. <laughs> <laughs>